well. That is the best band, worship band, in this area. I, I, love, those, I love those guys and those gals uh, so much. And uh, we are partners. And uh, our bond is, is very, very deep. And, uh, you know, I said last week, people want to think there's some conspiracy or, or some problem or something that would push me here. And, man, it certainly there isn't. Um, our teams are as good as they've ever been. And uh, I love those guys in the band. They are the easiest group of people to work with. Uh, they're growing in faith. And uh, they have blessed me so much. And uh, I know that they're going to be used in the future. In the short term, they'll be used other places. And I am their biggest fans. Um, maybe God brings us all together one day down the road. And uh, that would be really, really great. But I just want to publicly say, and you know this, they are the best worship band in this area by far. And to me, the reality is I could care less if the music is good, if they're difficult to work with, and most musicians are difficult to work with, especially drummers. <laughs> Marcus is the best drummer in this area. And has blessed me and been easy to work with. I want you to pray for Marcus because he's still considering Jesus as his savior. I love that kid. Well, this week, I've had lots of nice emails written to me. Is Trevor here? Where's Trevor? Trevor, I told them earlier that I was going to talk about you, but you weren't here. So everybody here was waiting for you to get to church today. Can you come up here, Trevor? i got to tell this story. Up here, brother. Right here. And me. The, story, the story isn't as good if they can't see you. This guy, ready? Come on, get out here in the light with me. This is my friend here, all right? This is my friend here. He is my friend. This guy does the opposite of me. He works with his hands. And he does meticulous work right here. He has built us stages. He has done stuff for us. He has blessed me as a person. He is my friend. If any of you need work around your house done on any level, he's a handyman. Is this what you told me to tell them before we <laughs> I'm just telling it whether he likes it or not. Huh. I have so many stories, and I could pick out a lot of people. I'm just picking out him um, this week. Uh, this guy scared me to death when I first met him because I was standing out in the waters of the Shenandoah River baptizing people that had told me they want to be baptized, and all of a sudden, Jesus comes walking out on the water. And I'm like, Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist already. Why do I get to baptize Jesus? I had never seen him before. He looks at me with his son and says, can we get baptized? I thought they were driving over on the highway. I didn't know they were related to anybody. And I was like, can you get baptized? And my Baptist background kicked in. And I was like, no, you can't. You have to go to a class first. <laughs> and then I was like, but I'm not Baptist anymore. Sure you can. What is your name? And he told me his name, and I baptized him in the, in the waters of the Shenandoah. And it was a great, great story, a highlight of certainly ministering here. But he told me something this week that I had to tell you. Um, over the past couple of weeks, you know, We've done some great things with Crazy Love, and Brooke uh, Arcia has done a great job of helping us get that going. Give her a hand. And anybody who has 
So this summer when I was praying and just trying to ask God what he wanted for me, um, our church went down to the Lamb Center on a Sunday. Now the Lamb Center is closed on Sundays. And so, and the Lamb Center is a day is a day center for homeless people in Fairfax. So our group was going into the Lamb Center on a Sunday when they're closed. My man Trevor here showed up to do some work and the lady said to him, I'm sorry, sir, we're closed on Sundays. Isn't that the awesomest thing ever? And I just say, yeah, that guy comes to our church and we have loved every single person. Even if you look like Jesus, we still love you. And uh, this guy is my friend. And uh, I just, I, he told me that story this week and I said, I got to tell everybody that story. So let Trevor know how much you love him. I got one other story today. I got a, a, an email this, this morning. I, I'm ranking in my, t I got some great emails this week of people, many people I don't even know whose life have been changed and uh, that's awesome. I, I think just guys, we gotta do a better job of telling each other how much we appreciate each other when there is nothing going on, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Woo! I got an email from Jess um, who is, Yes, I'm sorry, but Christian's girlfriend, which, you know, there's no, you know, yes, yes, yes. It was an awesome email, and I was loving every minute of it, and then I got to this phrase where I was loving it even more. She said, I'm so sorry I won't be seeing you every Sunday morning looking fresh in your fly clothes and shoes. And at this point, I'm just like, uh-huh, yes, yes. Yes, and then she dropped the bomb on me. Let me read it to you so you get the full gist of what I experienced. Are you ready? I'm sorry I won't be seeing you every Sunday morning looking fresh and fly in your clothes and shoes that Heidi puts you in. <laughs> Listen. She did not say that Heidi lays out for you and you dress yourself in the morning. She said the fly clothes that Heidi puts you in. I picture Heidi pulling my pants up in the morning. That is devastating, friends. Devastating. But... <laughs> I gladly admit that. When I met Heidi, I wore greens and browns or whatever, and she went, huh, your shoes don't match your shirt, which doesn't match your tie, which doesn't match your earlobes. I was like, you're supposed to match? Uh, that was after college, so college was a tragic experience for me. Um, then I met Heidi, and she definitely improved me. Well, I have so much to say, and, and, and um, I just feel so blessed to be a part of the story. And to be honest, I don't always understand completely what God is doing, but I, I just know that God has told me to take some time and, and uh, refire the engine. And I, I, I just know that if I don't do that, I won't lead anybody well. And um, I've been there for quite a while. I'm a really stubborn guy. I really love what I do. But I've just pushed myself as hard as I can and... We've made incredible progress. I'm so proud of Quest Church. Wouldn't trade it for anything. But on like a corporate level, which I've never really focused on, uh, we got to make progress so that you know lives become a better pace. And uh, just know, I don't I have no idea. God may bring me back here, and I know a lot of you jump right back on board, maybe more determined than ever. But I'm not abandoning you. I'm still alive. I'm still on a mission to go learn more. And. Uh, going to be a part of a great church in South Carolina. God, if I tell you the story of how God just told me to go there, I've had a few people that have sort of been, well, only one or two, well, really just one kind of mean person that I know about, and one person just couldn't get it, and they wouldn't talk to me, and I kept texting them, you've got to call me because I care about this young man. I love him to death. I said, you've got to talk to me, you've got to talk to me, and he's just so disappointed, 
that he wouldn't talk to me, and I just kept pounding him, you've got to talk to me, you've got to talk to me. We talked, and after I described, which I won't do here because I just don't have time, everything that God has done in my life to point me in a direction, this young man who's a newer Christian just said, Paul, I absolutely agree with what you're doing. And um, I know that God has spoken. So if you struggle, and if you struggle in the coming weeks, my email's going to stay the same. I'm still here. I will talk you through it, and I'm still alive. I have no idea what God's going to do, but here's the deal. Transition is happening. Chapters are changing in all of our lives. And I'm, I'm really sad for those of you who hurt or are sad, not in a bad way. You just love me, love us, love my family, love Quest Church. Know that up till last week when I told you what God was doing, which was a long process, all of my prayers were about just, God, what do you want me to do? I want you to know that this week, all week long, faces, your faces come to mind, and I just pray for you, and I pray for you, and I pray for you, and I will continue to pray for you, and I am still here to help you. If you really need to hear one of my sermons badly, uh, which I can't imagine, just call me, and I will go off on you for 45 minutes, <laughs> say goodbye, and you'll feel better, I think. But uh, I'm just still here, just going to change the rhythm. And uh, I love all of you. I, I'm, not, I'm not mad, but life is about change sometimes. And when you change, there's transition, and you have to change. One of the things that I don't want to do, and maybe some of you need a lesson in it, you're in a rut, and it, your life is just a, a rut. You've got to change it. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to look at life and make some changes. Maybe they're spiritual changes. Maybe you're living where you're not reading your Bible. You want to read your Bible. You need to get aggressive, make drastic changes in your life because life is about change, and it's in change that we grow. But here's the deal. Like we said.